His route has steered clear of the main high street. Although police blocks now stop people entering the town, a lot of residents there are still unaware of the tragedy. Michael Ryan has made his way from Southview to Fairview Road, then back up Southview across the playing field to Clark's Gardens. He has then walked over through the Memorial Gardens to Priory Avenue and Terence Hill, randomly firing at people as he goes. Well, it was some time before the firearms officers could actually get into the scene because we didn't know it. We were getting reports of shots being fired, uh, there were reports of people having been shot. Some people were uh, injured, we knew that. The telephone system was just incapable of taking all the emergency calls that were coming in. So it was very difficult to piece it all together. But yes, we got an idea of the route Ryan was taking up through the playing fields towards the school. Michael Ryan is now on Priory Road after taking aim at Carl Harry's. And then there was, there was a change in the tone of the, of the shots. Um, and I recognised that as being a pistol. And then it all went completely deadly quiet. And as I, as I came round the corner, I, I could see that uh, Michael Ryan had gone up, up the road. So I, I was pretty confident where, where I knew he was. And as I came round the corner here, there was a, this red um, Renault 5, I do what it was. And it was literally just rolling down the, car, down the road here. I started walking up and I remember somebody looking at the car and then started shouting, she's been shot, she's been shot. So I chased after it and I think it was around, it was around about here that I managed to catch up with the car as I pulled her up and got the door open, somebody appeared, and I, I assumed at the time it was, he came from one of these houses here. And he said to me at the time that he was a off-duty ambulanceman, and he gave me a hand to carry her, and we carried her across to the, to the grass, I do believe it was just here, and the ambulance came, and they basically took, took the, the, the girl away. And then I remember, then I remember, I, I just sat on the grass. Bless her, there was, a, there was this little old lady and she gave me one of these sort of like, you know, these cheap car plastic box type first aid kits which really are no good for, you know, really anything other than a cut finger. And um, she said, oh, this will help, you know, and I said, oh, thanks very much. As Ryan kills his 13th victim, 22-year-old Sandra Hill, this is now the biggest single massacre in the UK. 13 people are dead and a further 12 injured. As ambulance crews wait in the high street, they are desperate to reach the casualties, but like the police and fire crew, are restricted because of the danger. No one knows where the gunman is. In the initial stages, one of our ambulances was shot at, um, and luckily the crew were, did get away, and um, we didn't want the same thing to happen again. Um, the, it was immense pressure because you have people saying, my, my daughter or my son's up there and why aren't you doing anything? And people were shouting at you, but you couldn't actually put the crews at risk. You had the crews, in, in any of our jobs that we do, we have to put the crews' um, safety first. Despite the potential risk, brave paramedics are gradually getting to the victims. Then making the 50 minute journey to the hospital where Sarah Britton is trying to cope with the rising number of casualties. There seemed to be more and more people coming, sort of every time I sort of, you know, looked up again around the sort of main departments. And I think at that stage, I was just looking, you know, where is the drugs covered? Where is, you know, where are the bandages kept? You know, where do I find equipment? I was literally just sort of being another nurse, if you like, a member of the team, an additional pair of hands. Um, you expect sort of perhaps one or two, but when you start getting into double figures, I, I remember thinking, you know, when is it going to stop? Back in Hungerford, as Michael Ryan makes his way up Priory Road, police are calling in more backup, and ambulance crews are anxiously waiting for clearance. You know, it was important to get people out of the situation, as many as we could, but at the same time, you've also got the problem of, um, the person running around with the gun and you don't know where he is so therefore you don't want to send the ambulances up into into a, into a danger area. And they would be detailed to go to Priory Road, uh, another one would be detailed to go to Tarrant's Hill and it was sort of one ambulance to one section as it were. 
Over in Southview, as paramedics manage to reach Sylvia and Lisa Mildenhall, she has been shot four times and is losing a lot of blood. As they tend to her severe injuries, Sylvia is left to seek refuge at her neighbours. Both myself and the neighbour, we were sort of just sat, stood there and we just sort of looked at each other and we went to number 11. Nobody had told us who it was that had the gun at that time. I mean, because we had no radio on, no television on. Um, we were sitting in the bedroom and we were sort of talking. I remember one of the kids dropped the Lucy and we all jumped. And um, then suddenly we looked out the bedroom window and there was these police in the, in the school field with riot gear on. And they shouted and they said, Right, when I tell you to run, I want you to come to the front door and I want you to run. I don't want you to stop, I want you to carry on down the road and I want you to run. As Sylvia remains unaware that Michael Ryan has killed 13 people and injured 12, including Lisa, Carl Harris, who's already come face to face with a gunman, hasn't turned on his heel. Instead, he's now running towards Michael Ryan, trying to save others. I was very dubious about going around the bend, because you go around the bend, then the road is dead straight all the way up. And I thought, if I go around there, he, you know, he can see me, then help, you know. I made the decision that, you know, those, those people up there need help, I'm going to go up there. So, um, on the left-hand side, there's a whole row of cars, and I sort of worked my way up, keeping low between the cars and the wall. Um, and then I stopped, and I just didn't feel so... I felt something's not right. And I had a sort of quick look over the, over the car, and he was actually come back, and it was actually just the other side of the car. And at that point, I was like, you know, I'm getting under this car. I don't know, it was quite eerie because you could see his foot, you could see his feet. There's a silly little thing, it's like, are oh, my feet in? You know, have I got all my hands in? Is my feet in? Is he going to walk around and find my foot? 